So um, just an introduction, uh, as, uh, as was already done. Um, I'm a software engineer at Venmo. My name is Chris Adams. Um, my, my Twitter GitHub is uh, AdamC64. Uh, interestingly, I'm not the Chris Adams, who's also a developer, Python developer, Django developer, and Django contributor, who um, works at the Library of Congress, uh, ACDHA. So that's not me. Um, and neither of us are the gentleman Chris Adams, a 90s era professional wrestler who's here for disambiguation's sake. There he is. That's neither of us, just in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting having a very common name and seeing the collisions that can possibly happen. Um, so we're here to talk about Django. Django uh, is great. We all love using Django, I'm assuming. Um, and uh, Django, but, but Django is really a set of tools. And um, they, those tools work together um, in, in interesting ways and helpful ways. But at the end of the day, what we're using when we're using Django, when we're writing Django code, is, um, is, uh, is a set of tools that work a certain way. So tools are great, um, and, but tools can be used in good or bad ways. Okay? Um, this, um, in one sense, is very obvious. I mean, but, but when you're actually going into things, uh, it might not be so obvious to you when you're, when you're, when, when you're using them, especially for the first time. Um, so the Django ORM is one of the tools in, uh, that Django provides to us. It's an ob uh, object relational model. Um, easy wrapper over um, SQL queries, which used to have to be used, for, used to be much more tedious to be writing. Um, so one thing to remember is that whenever we're using a, a, a tool, especially a new tool, is we should manage our own expectations for for tools. Um, so many many people approach a new tool with a broad set of expectations as to what they think the tool will do for them. Um, however, this may have little correlation with what the project actually has implemented. So this is just kind of a long way of saying that tools can be misused, um, especially if you're new to them. So you know, as amazing as it would be if they did, unicorns don't exist. Um, tools, are, tools are not really perfect. Um, they never can be perfect in this imperfect world. Um, so we have to really understand them and not uh, deceive ourselves, especially when encountering new tools, um, uh, or that this tool is the one panacea that's going to really get everything. It's going to understand me. It's going to know me. It's really going to, you know, I'm going to be understood by this tool that I'm using. Uh, actually, that's not true. You, it's your responsibility to understand the tool and to use it correctly. So Django ORM, uh, among its... Other, um, among other things you could say about it, is an abstraction layer. So not only is it a, set of to uh, is a tool, but it's an abstraction layer. Um, abstraction layers are great because they take us away from um, messy details, uh, but also risky for the same reason. They take us away from messy details. Same reason, OK? Um, so we don't have to do many things that we used to have to do before because we have the ORM. But we might forget or not understand that the ORM's doing things that we don't expect it to do. So don't forget, you're far from the ground when using the ORM. You have, um, you have, you have the ORM API itself. You have Django's implementation. You have um, uh, Python. You know, maybe uh, y you misunderstand some, some way about how di uh, you know, dictionaries or keyword, keyword arguments work. You, you, have, you have lots of layers when you're using the ORM. And then you have the uh, SQL itself, and you have your, your specific database backend, which might have its own quirks, um, might you know, manage indexes in a particular way, might, um, might do things slightly differently, load things from, uh, return results from cache that you're not expecting, things, you know. And, and that depends on your, on your configuration. So you, you have a lot of layers here. Um, so one thing that I really like about Django is the query set, um, the, 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 the uh, programming interface that query sets implicitly give us, um, and uh, uh, explicitly give us. I mean, we can use, we can use the query, uh, we can define query sets, we can do many things with them, we can tell them we want certain things to happen um, when, we, when, we add, when we define query sets. Um, and um, so query sets have, have two features that's worth keeping in mind when you're thinking about them. One is that query sets are lazy. And the other is queries, query sets are immutable. So uh, this is a, a review for people who might know this already. Uh, so what do these terms mean? Lazy means that a query set doesn't evaluate until it needs to. 
So uh, many, many people, you know, don't get the, you know, really don't realize this. And when you do realize it, it's a great aha moment because um, you're, you're realizing what's going on behind the, uh, behind the hood. When you define a query set, you know, you know model.objects.all, what you're doing is you're, you're defining uh, an instruction, which is deferred. It doesn't get executed until it needs to. And there's certain cases when it does uh, execute, and um, many cases where it doesn't execute. Uh, query sets are also immutable, which means that if you chain them together, you say, you know, I have a query set, and then I say dot .filter, what's returned from that operation is a brand new query set. However, that new query set, um, in as much as possible, inherits all the features and the, um, the properties that you wanted of your old query sets. You can chain filters together. You return a query set, um, you apply conditional, have another filter that only happens in the case of that conditional. You can do all sorts of things. And uh, every time the query sets are returning, and you're getting a new one. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, uh, the, 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 the references to the old query set. You can, you can store, store one. Uh, you know, re return one to another, uh, send one to another function. Um, so qu query sets are always new. And so, you know, the, 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 the quick examples here, you know, e each of these operations is, uh, uh, returns a new query set and does not actually hit the database. So um, worth keeping in mind that, you, that um, what's not happening, and it's the same level as what is happening. Uh, these, however, um, are situations where query sets are evaluated. Um, there, are, there are a few of them. They're in the Django documentation. These are just a, a sample of three. Um, you know, uh, there, there are other ones also. Uh, query sets are evaluated when you uh, make a list out of them, when you um, use an index or range operator, um, and when you uh, iterate over them. So, but the interesting thing to, to think about here is that you can define a query set um, very, very early in your view function. It's only at the for loop, for example, in, in, the, third, in, the, in the third case here, that the query, says, query set is actually evaluated. The SQL is sent to the database server. So, um, so anyway, the things to keep in mind when dealing with, with, with uh, query sets. Okay. So um, I want to highlight um, some uh, easily, uh, some, some patterns which are problematic. Um, and oftentimes people don't even know that the pattern is problematic because they're really doing things that look very straightforward. I'm writing my, my view function. Um, everything looks great. I mean, you know, you know, everything looks very straightforward. It looks like I'm using the query sets the way I'm expected to. Um, but actually, um, when I understand what's going on, um, um, cert certain things, uh, um, it's, it's easy to miss. So. Let me, let me kind of point these out here. Um, so we have, we have a sample app, which is uh, a blog app, kind of boilerplate. Um, and I've, I've taken away like uh, various other attributes of these models. These are just the relations between the models. And um, one of the features of Django model objects is that um, when, I, when I act, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through the examples so we can save. So, so we have, um, we have basically blog post and a comment on a post. Uh, a submitter, which is a foreign key to the user model. Post, which has um, a foreign key back to the blog, so you're posting on a blog. And, um, you know, uh, uh, likers, many of the people who like that post, okay? Um, and comments on the post, which are done by a, a, a particular user. And, um, and, you know, the foreign key back to the post that they're the comment on. Pretty basic model, pretty straightforward. Um, and so here's a view, which, um, is, uh, which can be used to just generate a list of um, the blogs that are on the site. Maybe this is a management view or something like that. Looks really simple. Um, here's the template that renders that, that view. Looks really simple. Uh, we uh, have a, you know, uh, a, a reference to the blog detail page. We put the blog name there, and we say submitted by the person who submitted it, right? Very simple. It's, this seems like just, just home run, like really easy thing to write, the, the push it to production, get this thing working. Um, and it generates something like this, okay? As would be expected. All right, so, um, and now I just wanna talk about the detail view for a little bit. Um, the detail view um, is a way of seeing a particular blog. And I, I, you know, get the get the blog or 404 if the blog um, 
uh, doesn't exist. I, um, I, return, I, I, I request the posts that are, that are for that blog. And, uh, and then I render, I render that, uh, the blog detail uh, HTML. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of different features that maybe my users want to see. Um, they want to see um, who likes the blog. They want to see the comments that are on the blog. Um, and so th this is a little bit more complex. Um, so, and it generates something like this. Okay, you know, I, I just used some sample, uh, lower MIPSUM generator. So, you know, we have comments, we have people who liked it. Um, okay, so you, this looks a little bit more complex in terms of how, how this is generated. So now, as general developers, we're left um, thinking, okay, I've done my job, right? Um, I've, I've gotten something out. Um, I, I've, I've completed, um, completed the work, right? It works, right? But um, really, at the end of the day, as I said, uh, the Gengram is, is a tool, and the, the tool is functioning a certain way. Um, one of the main interfaces that um, uh, we have to, um, towards our data is through the SQL, qu the, uh, SQL query language. And uh, Django is generating, the ORM is generating SQL. So how do we find out you know, what SQL is being generated to, 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 uh, in a particular view? Um, and the problem is if you can't measure it, um, you never know if there are problems, right? You know, um, how, how do you know? There's, there's information lacking. And um, we can theorize based on what we think it's doing, right? This magical, I know what the ORM is doing. Like, you know, I, it's just super easy. You know, I'm using .all, so it's doing my, my query there, right? No, it's, it's not. There, there's lots of uh, false assumptions we can make. So really, um, in general, and this goes not just for Django, it goes for most tools uh, and most technology, um, you need to measure and you need to get an actual um, printout or a display um, and transparency into how the tool is functioning and what it's doing and as precise as possible. The more information you can get here, the more, the more power you have as a developer. And I think, uh, I think everyone, would, everyone would agree with me here. So how do we get this information? You know, we can't be naive with our tools. How do we get this information? Well, one really, really cool project is the Django Debug Toolbar. Um, if you're not using it, I highly re recommend you use it or um, have some way of uh, getting information um, that's equivalent to, to the, the kind of things that this provides out of the box. Um, so I'm not going to go over how to install it. Uh, they have good documentation. You, uh, you, you can do that. It's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, so let's use the Django Debug Toolbar to take a look at our, um, our pages. So first we'll take a look at the, the blog list page. So um, here's our blog list. And notice that one of the cool things that the Django Debug Toolbar is it gives us a uh, panel, which is um, it basically injects HTML JavaScript in, into the page and um, also the data about the execution of the page. And it gives us these tabs that we can click on. So we can get information about you know, um, the, the timing that it took to generate the HTML, um, uh, details about the settings, uh, the HTTP headers, the, the request object. OK, these are, uh, I, I could speak for a long time about each of them. Uh, I'm going to focus for this, for this talk on the SQL. And notice that there's 52 queries being generated. Uh, and being executed to generate this, uh, to, to actually generate this page, which um, seems like a lot for just a list, right? So like we, we, did, we did the thing, right? We used the ORM, it looked really straightforward. We, we used it and um, what, what happened here is um, we, we actually, we didn't realize it, we, we generated quite a lot of queries. And, and it, this is a bad thing because there's a, a, a network um, round trip that has to happen. The, the server has to send the query um, the, 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 um, and also the, uh, receive the response. And uh, the database server has to process each individual query. So there's a lot of extra overhead for having all these, all these things happening. Um, and uh, sorry, if we click on if we click on the SQL button, uh, it, the page actually actually um, this Django Debug tool gar toolbar actually gives us a list of all the queries that happen, which is kind of cool when you think about it. Here it is, right here, visualization. It gives us a timeline. I cut off a little bit more of the things just for the sake of uh, displaying, but you, you should definitely check it out. Um, so you know, now our next question is: Great, we have we have the queries here. Um, uh, where are they being generated? 
And actually, you can click on the plus, and you can get that information, the, the plus to the, to the left side. Um, will give us the full query and also the actual line of code where the query is, um, is, is, is generated. And I should say here, this is um, not a query set that's generating it. That, that, that's already happened. In this, particular, in, in this particular case, these individual select statements are being executed through the foreign key, blog.submitter. So Django, the query sets are lazy and also the model objects are lazy the foreign key relations aren't going to be accessed, aren't going to be loaded um, until they need to be or if they need to be. So that's why it saves in terms of an optim optimization. Maybe you never reference the submitter object. Okay? And so you don't need to have information about that, uh, the, the auth user um, uh, um, model object. So here it is. Uh, blog.submitter is um, being referenced. That's generating the, these many, many, many individual queries. And the more objects you have, the more queries you have. So this is actually a very bad situation, because, and there should be a way to do this much easier. So this is where select related comes in. Select related um, works by creating a SQL join and including the fields of the related object in the individual select statement for the um, the 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 for the model itself. So so the the auth user is going to be joined with. Um, uh, with uh, the, the, the blog objects in this case. So the SQL is going to return back the blog um, mo um, uh, multiple times uh, as, as many auth users as there are. And you think, well, is this bad? Well, it's actually much more efficient because you, you're batching it, you're doing it in one shot, and so there's only one network uh, back and forth to get that information. So it's actually um, much better, much fewer queries. Um, so it gets a related object in the same database query. And um, However, to avoid much longer result set that result from many relationships, so like a many-to-many -many field as opposed to a foreign key, or maybe a reverse foreign key when you're, when you're, where you're getting the, the opposite side of the relation, select related won't handle those cases. It'll just handle, think of it in terms of foreign keys and one-to-one -one fields. It's, it's, it's um, helpful. And when you're going to be iterating over them in a loop. Um, so here we, we use select related. Uh, we tell it we want to uh, select uh, the submitter and um, uh, of the blogs. And you can have commas and have multiple, uh, multiple fields, which, are, which it will join together and get all, the, all that information. And um, so, um, so now we do it. And uh, notice two queries. And there they are. Okay? And notice the inner join um, on, the, uh, on the query. So uh, we, we've just completely um, uh, reduced the number of queries. And even if we have much, much more users, and much, much more blogs, this isn't going to increase, um, just going to be two queries. So this is really, really great optimization, one, a great tool, especially when you're using loops. Um, so, all right, the blog detail page now is a little bit more difficult. So now notice we start with uh, 44 queries. And um, if we take a look at the queries in this case, it's a, it's a lot less straightforward, right? You don't just have a, a list. Um, and what I usually do is I start from the top, uh, open my code, and I actually go down and see, see where these things are being invoked. And I just try to be intelligent, try to identify patterns. Patterns are good. The same thing's happening over and over again. M might be a group of things happening over and over again. And in this case, I'm just going to um, uh, uh, reveal it for you here. The um, patterns that you identify if you take a look at these things are that uh, there is a submitter foreign key being accessed on the comment. OK, so now we're talking about comments that are being um, generated and who submitted that comment. And there's also a query on the likers um, attribute, which is, if you remember, is a many-to-many -many relation. There's people who like the post. So we have a comment.submitter and post likers. So prefetch related is an optimization that's used for this case. And instead of using an inner join, what Django is going to do is going to prefetch those, uh, those relations, those many-to-many -many relations. And it's, it's all, it, it then it's going to do the, uh, the operation we expect of, of our model, and it's going to join them in Python. And that's actually more efficient than having the database do it for you. So there's a reason why select related doesn't do this by default. Prefetch related is going to prefetch those many, many relations, because it could just result in a massive you know, you know, result set. So it's much, much better to use it this way. So you, you remember prefetch related is for many, uh, a, a, a relation that has many, uh, many possible. Uh, many related members. It does a separate lookup for each relationship, does a joining in Python, and it allows it to, uh, this allows it to prefetch many to many and many to one objects in addition to the foreign key and one to one that is in the select related, that select related uh, 
helps you use, helps to helps you manage. Um, and it also supports uh, generic relation, and ger generic foreign key. I don't know what version of Django that is, um, that it does support that. I would check that. But it, it you, you can use it for those kinds of things. So we put it in here. Um, uh, the, um, you can use double underscore syntax, and in this case, this is the most efficient um, ar set of arguments that um, um, there, uh, that you know at, uh, it, 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 that, that will help us in our particular example. Um, uh, there might be more that I, that I overlooked. I, I didn't spend that much time trying to find the optimal optimal. But these these uh, this simple optimization, this this one line of code is gonna is gonna save us. Um, so if you see, it's gonna prefetch through the comments table and get the submitter, and it's also gonna have that, the comments information, which is gonna be helpful for us. Uh, it's gonna implicitly do that, and it's gonna select the likers. And uh, one line, and we're done. Uh, well, you know, we only have seven queries now. I'm sure you can get this uh, even smaller. But, uh, you know, one line, just uh, amazing amount of work that, that, that you can do. If you notice, um, you know, it prefetches um, uh, certain things before others, so, you know, it, it's, it's just really, really helpful pattern to, to think about and to bring into your uh, your own tool toolkit um, as you as you're working to um, to uh, make your make your views better um, so in summary the query set API method select related and prefetch related automate some uh, some of these best practices uh, to avoid extra queries in views and in templates okay and uh, use select related for one to many or one to one relations and prefetch related for many to many or many to one relations, including the reverse foreign key relations. Um, so, um, yeah, that's basically it. So, thank, thanks. This is pretty straightforward. I hope this will um, uh, allow you to start using those, uh, these tools more effectively. Um, I, have, I have a code on GitHub, so, uh, GitHub, so please, uh, please clone it. Um, and, yeah, thank you very much.